In this video, we'll introduce some new variables. The volume flow rate, also called discharge, the mass flow rate, and average velocity. We can look at the picture shown here and know how to measure the rate of flow of water. All three of these variables are per time variables. We're getting serious about quantifying moving fluids. Here are our goals. There are a lot of them. You may want to stop the video now and look these over, revisiting ideas that you worked with during the reading assignment. The first variable we will introduce is the volumetric flow rate, also called discharge, also called Q. The simple way to think of discharge is to run water into a bucket and time it with a stopwatch. Gallons per second, liters per second. Discharge is any volume per time. The mathematical expression should be viewed with a little more attention to the details. It's a volume passing through a cross-sectional area, and so we will quantify the flux perpendicular to that cross-sectional area. It's a measurement at one instant in time, and it is, a, it is a calculus expression. That is, it's the amount of volume per time as the interval of time goes to zero. So we have discharge, a volume per time, with dimensions of length cubed per time. One way to get a volume per time is to multiply a velocity times an area. So remember, V in this course is velocity. Volume is the V with the line through it. So velocity is a vector. We already knew that. But just as we did with velocity and acceleration a few lessons ago, we need to think of area as having a vector aspect as well. So let's take a look at this figure. We have a patch of area called dA and a velocity vector is crossing it. The velocity vector crossing it is, is the vector V. But for our quantification of discharge, we're only going to want the component of velocity that's normal to the patch of area dA. So that's this V sub n. Okay, so let's take that knowledge back to our figure. So as you've learned in your math courses, the dot product in this equation means that you're only multiplying parallel components. And the dA vector is perpendicular to the area, so you're multiplying the velocity that's perpendicular to the area times the um, dA magnitude. Next point, if V doesn't vary over the area, Q is given by this nice simple equation that Q equals V times A. And by the way, dividing Q by A is one way to get the average velocity. More about that later. But what if the velocity does vary over the area, which is the case for our bullet-shaped parabolic velocity distribution that we've talked about this semester already? Well, then we do have to do an integration over the area, and the only way to do that may be to rewrite the dA term in terms of one length variable that is varying. In the case of a circle, that's radius. So dA equals 2 pi r dr. And if that last step seemed like I was pulling a rabbit out of a hat, here's a more detailed review of switching geometries for integration. Okay, our next new variable is mass flow rate, otherwise known as m dot. Sometimes, especially in industry, we may need to talk about the mass of material we're moving around, especially if we deal in different concentrations of the stuff. So, mass flow rate we abbreviate as m dot. The little dot on top of the m indicates per time. What's the difference between a mass flow rate and discharge? It's the density. The, put a density in your equation for Q and you have a mass per volume times a volume per time. This gives you mass per time. Once again, an integration is required if your velocity is a function of R. Otherwise, m dot is simply rho times a times v bar or rho times q. So, so far in this lecture we've introduced these two very important equations. 
And something to note, these aren't just definitions, but equations. In our next listen, lesson, we'll learn another equation called continuity that looks an awful lot like the discharge equation, but is based upon a different concept. So remember, these are equations as well as being definitions. If you haven't looked in the front cover yet for these units, here are some of the units we use for discharge and mass flow rate. So next, more about V-bar. Remember we said that one way to get V-bar was to divide Q over A, and that Q might vary as a function of R. Well, this table is kind of a cheat sheet for what the value of V-bar will be for different types of velocity distributions. Remember in Chapter 4 we talked about how laminar flow has a bullet-shaped parabolic distribution and how turbulent flow has a more blunt, plug-shaped distribution? Well, because of these different geometries, the magnitude of V-bar, the average velocity as a function of Vmax, is different. So, to summarize this lecture, Volumetric flow rate or discharge is given by velocity times area or m dot over rho or you may have to evaluate an integral for v dot dA. Mass flow rate is given by m dot which is equal to rho times area times the average velocity which is equal to rho times Q. And again you may have to do an integral where you multiply the density times v dot dA. The mean velocity, v-bar, is an area average, not a time average, and it's given by q over area. Typical values of mean velocity depend upon whether the conduit is round or rectangular and whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. That concludes this lecture. Thank you for your attention.